ഡയറക്ടർ ജനറൽ ഓഫ് ഐ ഡി എസ് എ അംബാസിഡർ സുജൻ ആർച്ചിനായ് ഡിസ്റ്റിംഗ്വിഷ് ഗസ്റ്റ് ഫ്രം സൗത്ത് ഏഷ്യൻ കൺട്രീസ് മെമ്പേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ദി സ്ട്രാറ്റജി കമ്മ്യൂണിറ്റി ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ഫ്രം ദ മീഡിയ ലേഡീസ് ആൻഡ് ജെൻറ്റിൽമാൻ നമസ്കാരം ടു ഓൾ ഓഫ് യു ഇറ്റ് ഗിവ്സ് മീ ഇമൻസ് പ്ലഷർ ടു ബി അറ്റ് ദി ഇൻസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂട്ട് ഓഫ് ഡിഫൻസ് സ്റ്റഡീസ് ആൻഡ് അനാലിസിസ് ടുഡേ ടു ഡെലിവർ ദി കീ നോട്ട് അഡ്രസ് ഓഫ് ദിസ് ടു ഡേ conference that is the idss 12th south asian conference which centers around india's neighborhood first policy idsa has successfully organized the south asian conference for many years idsa is india's largest and most influential think tank i would say official think think tank established in 1965 it has an enviable record of working at the crossroads of defense national security and foreign policy issues it has contributed to furthering our common objective of promoting peace and prosperity in our region the presence of scholars academicians and officials from the region at this conference is testimony to idss outreach together you will dwell on the theme of the conference over these two days and come up with new ideas and perspectives that will benefit all of us friends as a civilization that has flowered over millennia through a syncretic process of give and take through the exchange of ideas trade and cultural contacts india has long advocated the importance of good neighborly relations the tradition of vasudhaiva kutumbakam is deeply enshrined in indian thought philosophy and action this ancient tradition continues to guide india's foreign policy in general and its approach to its neighborhood in particular our region's prosperity hinges on how well we work together to build the foundation to our cult- for our cult- future and how well we respect the principles of coexistence and dialogue prime minister modi has outlined the principles of engagement in the region in the form of samman that is respect samvad that is dialogue sahyog that is cooperation shanti that is peace and samriddhi that is prosperity so these are the five s if i tell if i express so I wish to share with you the underlying fundamentals which guide the framework and implementation of India's neighborhood first policy. You are all aware that 2014 marked a watershed moment in India's foreign policy and especially in relation to the approach towards its neighborhood. What commenced with an invitation to all elected heads of state of South Asia and Myanmar has continued with the similar earnest and warmth over the next 6 years over time the key components of india's policy to enhance and improve its relations with all its neighbors became significantly perceptible pm modi had said that it's our neighborhood which is the most critical which is most critical for our future and our place in the world pm modi's description of the neighborhood first policy is based on the principle of sabka saath sabka vikas or sabka vishwas which is the fundamental framework for all countries in south asia marching forward together to achieve common prosperity the applicability and suitability of this team term can best be judged by its constituents and over time its effectiveness of implementation india's relationship with its neighbors are collectively the most important component of india's foreign policy the priority that we have given to our neighborhood is evident in a number of spheres commencing with this government's first term and continuing into the second prime minister narendra modi has visited capitals in the region with unparalleled frequency members of the government at all levels have also done so regularly we have also renewed people to people contacts which are so very essential 
to reinvigorate centuries of linkages that we have maintained and cherished through trade familial and cultural bonds at the heart of my government's policy towards its neighbors in south asia is the sentiment that india as the largest country with the largest economy and population can and would share its capacities with its partners in the region on a non reciprocal basis as it has been mentioned in the by ambassador chinoy the implementation of this policy over the past nearly 6 years has strengthened the spirit of mutual respect and closer cooperation between us in all spheres of social and economic development in recent years we have forged deeper mutual trust and successfully enhanced the security ties to fight common threats and challenges including terrorism the neighborhood first policy includes within its ambit i would say five c's that have become integral to its implementation the first element of india's neighborhood first policy is the principle of collective cooperation that is the first c while india may be the largest most populous and the biggest economy in the region we are conscious of the fact that this advantage must be utilized more for the collective upliftment of the region than for the people of one country there is acknowledgement and realization in india that within like minded countries in the neighborhood that economic and social progress can be multiplied through the cohesive effort and genius of people of the region of the entire region in a world interlinked through both physical and virtual connectivity the idea of erecting psychological barriers to human progress can only be to our collective detriment there is an understanding within in india that learning is mutual sharing is mutual progression is mutual and respect is also mutual in fact there is an upanishad quote which if i may recite before you which in a way mentions which conveys the uh, the essence of collectivism which says that uh, the the first uh, i can say the first lesson or the first message that a teacher imparts to the student is working together living together partaking the meals together that is the sense of collectivity that is that has been the ethos of india so that's why in our upanishads we say sahana bhavatu sahano bhunaktu sav sahaviryam karava avahai tejasvina vadhi tamastu ma vidyushavahi this is the i can say that uh, this sense of collectivity we try to escalate it to the at the international level including the neighborhood first policy this cooperation becomes most useful effective and critical particularly when the challenges faced are regional and at times global it is at such critical times that vested interests attempt to ensure that the manifestation of the response remains weak and local such threats tend to exploit cleavages and cracks across boundaries and within societies often at the cost of human life and prosperity human life and property this threat is most visible in the form of terrorism both extra regional and 